This is the Ross Developers Podcast, episode 73. The Ross Developers Podcast, the Ross Developers. Hello, ROS developers, and welcome to the ROS Developers Podcast, the program, the podcast that gives you insights from the experts about how to program your robots with ROS. This is Ricardo Tayev here from The Construct, and today I would like to dedicate this episode to all those teachers that are at present preparing the next semester of uh, robotics education. So, you know, we are now in July, it's mid-July, and then uh, the previous semester has finished, and then many, many teachers, they are at present now preparing the material, making the plans, and thinking about how to deliver the next semester to be started maybe in the fall of August or beginning of September. So for all of you that are there working hard, especially in the COVID uh, situation, so this uh, podcast is dedicated to you. Keep pushing and keep teaching Ross. Okay, so uh, what it's about this episode here is in this episode, I'm going to show you a list. I'm going to explain you a list of robots based on Ross that you can buy for doing demonstrations in your uh, or practicing, making your students practice during your Ross classes or your robotics classes. So that's perfect for those uh, teachers that are thinking and are preparing their classes now. But before going into that, let me tell you about our academy, of course, our Ross uh, Academy that we have online, which is called the Robot Ignite Academy. At the Robot Ignite Academy, we have uh, lessons that teach you how to program robots with Ross. So you have all the concepts, ROS1, ROS2, ROS navigation, ROS perception, etc. So how machine learning with ROS, etc. And recently we have been adding also extra extra courses based on teaching robot kinematics. So what we are doing is applying ROS to teach the basic robotics concepts like mobile kinematics for wheel robots, holonomic, non-holonomic, arm kinematics. We are also, for example, we have included courses for teaching you about machine learning, the principles of machine learning, and then how to apply these to robots. Uh, of course, using ROS, but you will learn all the concepts of ROS. So I, will, I would like to recommend you that you go there to the academy and, and just have a look. You'll see that they are very, very interesting courses and very well done. So now, now it's time that we go to the subject of this podcast, which is which Ross robot to buy for education, right? Then uh, the list of robots it's uh, that I'm going to do. So I have to tell you that we have received no money, no commission of any type or compensation for showing those robots here on the list. It's just my opinion, my personal opinion based on my practice. And then the, the criteria that I have... Uh, taken for deciding which robots to put in there is uh, are the following. So first is that they must be robots that run ROS, that they, they can work with ROS, maybe either because when you buy them, they already work with ROS, or maybe because there are some drivers that are available and that you can, you can put on those robots. Okay, So if you are thinking about any other robot that doesn't work with ROS, so it's not included in this list. Then also, uh, I have selected robots that you can e easily buy. Okay, so there are, uh, for example, a, a lot of websites that they say, okay, so I have this robot, and then you can build this robot by doing this and doing that, and then that's not the purpose of this list. So the purpose of this list is that you go to a place and then you get uh, all the pieces, and then maybe, it's already built. Maybe you had to put the pieces together, but you have the full package, right? Uh, then that's another criteria. And the third one is that uh, 
these robots that you are buying or using, they had to be, so you had to be able to use them for your own purpose. So what I mean is that those robots are not part of a of another application of another product that is closed and that you cannot touch and you cannot make the students put their hands and change the code and so on. So we are thinking about robots that you can use for your own purposes, okay? Okay, so those are the criteria, and then it may happen that on the list that I'm going to present, uh, your robot, you, you are a company, you are listening to this, you are a company, your robot is not listed here, and you think that your robot should fit on this list, then let me know. If, you, if that's the case, please let me know, and then I will add this on the show notes. And, and then it, because this uh, podcast includes a show notes where I am putting all the details about those robots, where to buy them and extra information. So if your robot is not in the list and you consider that it has to be, please contact me and then I will consider to put in this, to add in this into the show notes. Okay, so now that I have clarified all the criteria, all the conditions for uh, putting a robot here on this list, let's go. So I have a um, couple, I have a couple of, no, couple, no, sorry, is one, two, and three, and four categories for the robots for research, okay? So the first category I'm going to, to explain you is the category I call the do-it-yourself robots. So those robots are robots that you buy in pieces. So you buy a package and, and it's, it's the package is, contains all the pieces that you need to build it. So, but everything is ready. So you only need to screw and, and that's it, basically. Okay, and then connect the cables. So on this, uh, on this list, the first one that I would like to consider is called Lino Robots. The Lino robots is actually a series of robots. Well, it's, it's like a, a package that contains a lot of pieces. And with those pieces, you can, you can create different configurations of two-wheeled robots. Those Lino robots, they were created by Juan Jimeno that uh, I interviewed in this podcast some weeks ago. We'll put a link to his interviews if you want to know more about those Lino robots. Very, very interesting ones. And then it's, uh, so as I mentioned, you can build several types of wheel robots using laser scan. Uh, and then you can use it, those robots, to learn co concepts like uh, robot kinematics, obstacle avoidance, and navigation. Then the second one I would like to mention is the Ducky Bots. The Ducky Bots are the robots created for the Ducky Town project. It's a very famous project made at uh, MIT. And then you can use those robots for uh, teaching also to your, uh, making your students practice. Specifically, it's a differential drive robot that contains a camera. So those are the sensors that basically have. You can add also an IMU, but it's this is not mandatory. So you can make a simple experiment about making the robot navigate by using vision. That's very interesting and recognize uh, like uh, traffic signals, recognize the road and so on. Very, very interesting. Then um, final one on the do it yourself, I'm going to uh, recommend you the JetBot that is a robot that is a very small robot that is based on the NVIDIA Jetson NanoCard. And then by being based on that card, that makes that the, uh, a robot very interesting option in case that you want to use deep learning with your robot because that, that car is equipped with a CUDA, with CUDA cores. So the JetBot, it's a very interesting one in case that you want to apply deep learning also. You want to do experiments in deep learning on board of the robot. Yeah. Okay, so that's those are the three ones I wanted to recommend you on the do-it-yourself robots option. Then we go to the section or classification. Then the next one is the small wheel robots. So in this case, uh, the small wheel robots, I will uh, show you some wheel robots that you can use and they are already 
made so you can buy them and then you unbox it and they are ready for for working mostly so the first one is the turtle bot 2 that you probably know so that's very interesting it's a wheel robot based on a roomba base mobile base and then it contains a, a, a depth a point cloud sensor and then you can use this for for many many things so you can include extra lasers for example to do navigation slam with a laser or you can use even the depth sensor to do navigation in 3d and, and then you can so you you can test everything related to mobile robots you can do it with this robot about navigation and moving around and recognizing places things objects and so on and it's not so big i mean this robot is bigger than the ones that i presented on the previous section of course but it is not so big. it's it's big enough okay the, the other ones are very small very small and this one is kind that has a a perfect size for this kind of um, teachings. Then the second one I would like to recommend in this section is the Turtlebot 3. So the previous one was Turtlebot 2, and in this now is the Turtlebot 3, which is a robot made by Robotis, a Korean company, and uh, is the next generation of Turtlebot. And uh, it's interesting because it also contains a wheel robot, differential wheel robot, and uh, you can by different configurations actually there are two the burger configuration and the waffle and you can see on the pictures with which one is you can go to the show notes and see the pictures and but, but basically both of them they have a laser that they use as a sensor for navigating around or detecting obstacles or whatever other other subject that you would like to to use the 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 laser and what it's interesting also is that those robots the Tartelbot 3 series they are ready to work with ROS2 and it's, it's the first one the first robot that was able to run with ROS2 I mean commercial robot okay so I'm talking about that commercial robot okay the next one in this section of the small wheel robots we have the ROS bot it's a robot. is a robot made by company Usarion, and it, the robot I like it very much because it's very compact. You know, it's it's a four wheel robot, but in a differential style. Okay, so it's it's not ergonomic. It's a four wheel, but it works like a differential drive with two wheels, and it's very very compact. It's packed with sensors so this has infrared sensors it has imus it has a laser everything from uh, the box okay then a point cloud device so it's uh, very it's very rich in terms of sensoring also is quite compact and small so it's small enough and big enough also at the same time so i uh, highly recommend it also for doing experiments and also this robot can work with ROS2. You have to do some, some things, okay? So change something in the firmware and uh, change the system that is running by default. But apart from that, then you can achieve to make it work with ROS2. Okay, next uh, series of robots are robot manipulators. So, you know, those ARM robots, that are uh, that have may have or not may have or not a gripper and are able to so you put on your table and you can make experiments about grasping things on the previous ones we were uh, talking about robots that can move around and do autonomous navigation in this case is for manipulation for grasping things and then the first one that i would like to recommend you is the open manipulator also by company robotics you know the robotics is the company i mentioned before that have made the turtle bot 3 and uh, this open manipulator is quite small and and simple so it's quite small and simple and uh, actually you can even download from their website all the um, all the 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 construction instructions also how to print all the pieces etc so it's, it's an open source robot and you can attach this uh, open manipulator to a turtle 3 for example 
So it's compatible and you can attach this. So, so if you put this arm on top of a tartable tree, then you will have a mobile manipulator moving around in small dimensions and for a low, pl low price. So in any case, you can also use it as a standalone um, manipulator arm. And that's all. So you put it on your table and go for it. Then uh, on the same, same similar line, we have the Crane X7 by a Japanese company, which is called RTNet. Okay, so this is also a 3D printed robotic arm, but it's uh, quite bigger, more bigger than the Open Manipulator. And then it's uh, what is interesting is that it com it it's part it's, it, it becomes it's part of a set of educational materials that are very very nice. They're composed of books and instructions about how to maximize your educational um, the, your educational uh, uh, classes. So when when you are using this robot for teaching students. So, and uh, this robot also comes with a gripper, okay, as the open manipulator I didn't mention, but it has the, the arm and also the gripper. Then on this uh, also on this line also we have the the next one I would like to recommend you is the Nirio one by a company called Nirio, and the Nirio one uh, I like it very much also because it's very small. It's a small. It's bigger than the open manipulator. Smaller than the crane. So it's in that mid uh, location and it's, I, I like it very much because it's very compact and it looks very strong. It's, it's very, also, it's very cool. It's very cool. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, basically, that's, it's, it looks very strong, it's compact, it's a perfect size and it also comes with a gripper. So it can be an interesting option also. Then uh, the final ones in this section, I want to recommend you three more in this sec section of arm uh, manipulators. That those are more commercial and a lot more expensive. But I think that maybe for some classes, maybe it could be interesting. The first one is the Gen 3 by Kinova company, uh, which is the latest robotic arm with six degrees of freedom. And they have the purpose of using this for education and research. Uh, and well, yeah, so, so it's it's a bigger arm. And uh, I don't know, I think it's a little bit expensive, but it always depends on your budget and your requirements or what you need. Uh, it comes by default with a point cloud device attached to the end effector. But the problem is that it doesn't has a gripper by default. So in case that you would like to uh, grasp the things, then you will have to buy an extra gripper from another company and then attach to it. But it's quite nice. This robot is is very beautiful also, and uh, yeah. So maybe for your case, it's interesting. Then on a similar line as the Gen Three, it's the Panda robot by Franca Emika. This case is a robot with seven degrees of freedom. And this one does include the gripper. So it's actually ready for your, for your classes in order to make it grasp. Then the only thing is that this one doesn't have any perception. As the Gen 3, it had some point cloud device attached. In this case, it doesn't have any, any sensor. So you will have to add, maybe put an external camera or so on. Then finally, on this line, of our manipulators, I would like to introduce or to present to you the Sawyer Black, which is uh, the Sawyer Black is the latest version of Sawyer Robot by Rethink Robotics. So you know yeah, that uh, Rethink Robotics was closed uh, some uh, a year ago, but it was bought by another company which is called Han Group. And they have developed this new version of Sawyer that they call the Sawyer Black. And it's an updated version of Maxter uh, with seven degrees of freedom, with a gripper, and also with cameras on its grip. So it, it could be interesting for some uh, educational si uh, situations. And then we reach the final section, the, or the final classification, which is about ledge humanoids. 
Okay, so in humanoids, it, maybe you would like to do some experiments with humanoid robots to make it work, walk, and to do autonomous, uh, let's say, autonomous navigation by using legs instead of wheels. Then the robotics, Robotis OP3, which is a robot made by Robotis company, the Korean one that I have presented already to robots from that company. And it's interesting this because it's a small um, humanoid with two legs, with arms, with a torso, with a head, with cameras, and it fits on your desktop. So it's interesting because you can use it for uh, your ROS uh, development and you can put it also on your desk and then have it there working for, for whatever you need. And you don't need a big space. You also don't need uh, to take a special care because it's small enough. So it falls down and nothing happens. So you put it back and, and that's it. That's interesting. And that is all on the ledge humanoids. I haven't found anything else, anything more that I can show you. And uh, then I will conclude here. I would like to show you more uh, other humanoid robots, but the problem of those that they are more focused to research because they are bigger, they are a lot expensive, and then you have to take a lot of care. So it's difficult to use those for education or where a lot of students, they have to be there uh, touching and moving and practicing and, and making the robot fail because the programs are going to fail. And then you should be able to see that Nothing happens, nothing badly happens when the students do mistakes in their programs. So the robot crashes against something, then it doesn't break, it, it's, that's interesting. That, so I, I think that this is necessary for an educational situation, an educational institution. And that is all for today. Then I don't have anything else to show you about the robots. I hope that this list is useful for you. At, at least gives you an idea of what to expect. If you want to go to the specific pages of any of those robots, go to the show notes. You are going to find a link to their pages so you will see the prices and how to buy and so on. As I mentioned, we have no commission on this. So just feel free. And uh, that is all for this uh, podcast, for this session. And uh, then on the next one, we are going to continue with doing interviews of other ROS developers around the world. So give us uh, five stars on iTunes, very good reviews and, and comments, either on the iTunes or even in the post of this on the show notes. So that would be great. So we can know what you think about the podcast, if we should do more interviews or more informational podcasts like this one. So let us know in the comments, okay? So thank you very much. And remember to keep pushing your Ross learning. The Ross Developers Podcast. The Ross Developers.